we're seeing, I think, integration of uh, the uh, abiraterone into radium. For example, my, my colleague Oliver Sarger and I have a poster that will look at uh, the value of abiraterone integrated into radium. We made an observation, which I think is important, that if you wait too long to give radium, uh, you're not going to get the benefit of radium. Uh, and that stands to reason, but it's still an important observation. So what we noticed was that patients who'd had extensive prior therapy and then got radium often didn't get the full six doses of radium. Uh, to get, uh, according to the FDA guidelines, you should get six doses of radium. That's once a month. And many of these patients are having progressive disease. So we would like to get them radium before uh, they get too sick. Six months in the lifespan of an advanced cancer patient is a lot of time. And you have to be sure that you've got that six months. Uh, so those are some important observations. Uh, that I think are going to be talked about more at this meeting. Uh, we also have uh, the whole issue of resistance to hormone therapy. Um, the um, data on the uh, truncation of the androgen receptor and what that means for the benefit or lack of benefit to abiraterone and um, enzalutamide, those are all also uh, being actively investigated. Some of the newer agents are being tested in those particular uh, types of patients. Um, and then lastly, we have the surprising and ongoing uh, activity of uh, cabazitaxel, which in spite of lots of negatives at the beginning when it was first introduced, uh, continues to be a remarkably uh, well-tolerated drug, particularly for the elderly individuals. So I'm, I continue to be rather pleased with our armamentarium for these patients.